the surgical strike idea was Jimmy Blendick talking from the bar, but it's your idea and it's also your agent, because I want to talk a bit about agent managers, right, actors looking for agents in terms of, it sounds like the agents you had, LA and New York, were smart. They were prepared, they were you. prepared to work with me in that way. And I said, look, I need to stay connected to the theater. I find the, the I said, te I resisted doing television. I refused to do television Episodic series. Episodic television. Episodics I would do. I would drop by and do something. A drop by, a surgical strike, yes. To do, a, a, to audition for a series, to do pilot season and all that, I didn't want to do. Why? Because it was the same as Stratford. Same writers, same people. I said, I'm so bored. You can't put me in a room with the same people for seven years doing the same. I will shoot myself in the face. Can't happen. I want to do something new and something different and something exciting. A, a and day you had on enough this film. credibility that your agents didn't say you can't afford that column at this party. You got to do everything. But you had enough credibility to say I'm doing this. No, and they, they said you can't afford that. They said I, I don't know how you're going to do that. You, you, so Maybe. They, they said two things. First, you had to live there, and then you didn't, you didn't. And then they said you have to do everything, and you said you'd, you'd we work. We compromised. Work. They said you should come for a while. But what I did was I managed to then piggyback a job on an audition. And an audition was the next thing. And so I'd get a job, I'd go down, you know, I did face off. So I'm the doctor who takes their faces off. And while I'm doing that, I audition for that. And so then the week after that finishes, I'm doing City of Angels. Then I tell the people in New York and in Toronto, I'm here doing City of Angels and face off. Can you parlay that into something else? Because then I'm going to come home and I'll do that. And so what we did was we, we kept moving the, the dice, or, you know, the, the shells around for this game. And I tried to put off going there as long as possible. When I finally did move there, when I did a year on 24, I did season seven of 24, and Donna got me an apartment in Venice, just, you know, right by, um, where is it, right on the beach uh, in Venice next to Santa Monica. And it was fabulous. And a little pied there, there, I thought, okay, we'll really invest in this. I'll shoot this. And at the same time, I was, see, this is again part of how it worked. I was shooting 24, but I was also doing a film for Clint Eastwood. So I'm shooting with Clint Eastwood, and I'm doing the television series, and I know that if I shoot this series that's gonna come out there and this movie that's gonna come out there, I can afford to go back to theater. I can afford to say to Stratford, if you need me, if you want me, if you wouldn't mind, I can create the illusion that there's movement in film and television. How did you learn that? that I call that smarts. That's smarts. I know you probably had good agents helping you, but that's smarts. Well, none of them wanted me to come back to the theater. I came back to the theater because I liked it. How did you learn the smarts to work that difficult system that so many of us have failed at? Well, How did you work it? I don't know that we did. We, we, we muddled. We muddled, you oh, know. Colin, it's been brilliant. Come on. We muddled along. And, you know, Donna has been enormously supportive of, you're going to have to go to do this. I said, but I, I'll be away for too long. No, we'll come to you or we'll figure something out. We've muddled. And sometimes it's been a lot harder than others. Looking back, it looks as if there was a plan, but it was mostly, look, will that pay enough money to subsidize this? Can we afford to do this time together if that? What are the kids doing now that is really critical that one just can't be away for? Darling, what are you doing now that I should be here doing, you know, driving kids to volleyball for? And for, you know, for 27, 28 years, that's what we've been doing. It's, it's worked out. It's not always been easy. It, I feel very, very blessed and immensely lucky that we've both had careers and the kids are all at school doing things that they want to do and those that have graduated are doing You managed to work a system that no other actor, Canadian actor, has been able to work. I'm sorry. You, you know, okay, I'll tell you one it. thing I do. i tell you one thing that I do do that maybe a lot of my colleagues are not, have not done. I show up. And I've always said that my, my, my mantra is, you keep showing up. And by that I mean, will I read for this? Yeah. Will I audition for this? Yeah. Will I put myself on tape for that? Yeah. Will I fly in for that? Yeah. One do of the you self-tape now? Oh, I always do. Always do. You self-tape from home? I, I self-tape on my phone. And then I'll do a more sophisticated version, then I'll do Skype, and then I'll, then I'll fly in. I will do whatever it takes, and I have been through the ringer. Many of them have been explosively disappointing. So for those of you who don't know, actors now have to self-tape. They don't actually go on a media casting agency if they're allowed well, they're called to submit you know, it happens. Uh, listen, it happens a bunch of different ways. Yeah. Clint Eastwood just doesn't meet actors. 
I was shooting a movie in London when he was asking for actors, and I said, I'll fly in. I'll meet him, because I know in the room, ha ha, I'm so, he said, he doesn't want to meet actors. And of course, I'm working with him, and being close to him, I understand why. First of all, he's an actor, and he's a director. And he goes, look, I could see 30 of you guys, but I can't hire 30 of you guys. I'm going to hire one of you. So what I need to do is have all of your managers and agents send me the pictures to the, my casting person who knows what I want, and they're going to give me four of them to look at. I'm going to look at the four, and I'm going to ask two of you to put yourself on tape. I'm going to pick one, and you're going to show up, and you're going to do it. And that's how it works. And I, was, I, felt, I felt immensely pleased you know, that my audition for him, because it was like a, I was doing an improvised film where I was doing all the talking and inventing it, and of course I have to play doctors, and so he'd be articulate doing that, and he had written, a, he'd sent a script with four solid pages of text. I was so relieved. I learned this text, and I thought, I'm going to do it like Clint does it. I'm going to shoot the rehearsal, I'm going to do one take in some little office in London, I'm going to get it onto a DVD for him and translate it from the English thing to the European thing, I'm going to FedEx it, and fuck him, that's it. And I got the job.